Pastor Miller in your prayers. The closer we get to what God has for us, the more the enemy wants to fight against us. Amen. He comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And when you have a made up mind, <laughs> that's the best of all the to say, you got to have a determination <laughs> to serve the Lord. And so I have a determination to serve the Lord. I pray today that you all will join me in that faith, in this faith. And we will see God do great and mighty things, despite the circumstances of the day and time we're living in. I believe in God. I trust in God. I put my whole life in his hand. I don't have no reason to be here except that God sent me to Shady Dale. Amen? Amen. And so I just thank God for being here today. I thank God for all of you and I pray that you will be blessed and wish you experience thus far. This time we will have our announcements. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. Just a few announcements this morning. Let's remember the pastoral installation service. He says, join us in this worship experience as we celebrate new beginnings with our congregation. The guest speaker will be Pastor David L. Hoy at the Rima Word Church in Shreveport, Louisiana. We will be joined by a family and friends of our mighty, of our ministry, that will share in praise, worship, and exhortations. Food will be served following the service. And this is the installation service for Pastor Aquila Riggins at the United Covenant of Hope Church uh, of God here on 6555 Mesa Drive. So if you have the time today or have it in your heart to go and support him and be the church and support him in their new endeavor. Let's remember the Dynamics Revival, which will be happening starting on Monday the 7th through Wednesday the 9th. It's the Fire Conference uh, North America 2022. And that will be held at the Hilton, Houston North, 12,400 Greens Point Drive. Let's also remember um, your donation for the Thanksgiving basket. I uh, believe that the deadline was uh, November the 6th, which is today, correct? Mm -hmm. So if you have not yet paid, you're welcome to do so. Um, the next uh, venture will be the Christmas baskets, which will be due on December the 4th. So let's keep that in our minds so that we can uh, get started on this once we finish this particular endeavor for Thanksgiving. Let's remember also our Wednesday night Bible study, which is held at 7.30 p.m. on our local Zoom. So um, please if, join us if you have not already. And also remember um, Brother, and, uh, Brother uh, Williams and Brother Nehemiah's presentation of the uh, Sunday School, which is on our, uh, our uh, YouTube channel. So please keep those things in mind, those things that... Um, that are really important. Uh, teaching is good. So if you have not seen that, their uh, post, then please look into it because you're missing, some, you're missing some good word. So if all hearts are clear, please go in yourselves accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I haven't gotten any names, but if, if you do, if anyone does have names, please turn them in. I have one name and I will give it to you guys. So. Thank you, Sister Higgins, for those announcements this morning. And uh, also, I will be at Pastor Aquila's uh, installation service today as well. So, uh, my first lady and I will be there. <laughs> 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 We'll both be there today. <laughs> I will be on the program. I'll be watching you on the program. <laughs> so we look forward to being there. Today is at 3 o'clock. So I hope that you will join us over there to celebrate Pastor Cooley. He's been here a few times as well. So look forward to uh, being there at 3 o'clock today. Um, United Coming Hope Trip of God here at Houston, Texas. Welcome. Welcome to the Facebook Live. Uh, family and also the the um, Facebook Church Hopper family, we thank you for for joining. We thank you for 
joining us today. We thank you for continuing to watch and to continue to grow and to share that which, that you have learned with other people. And so we, we appreciate you. We can't see you, but we know you're there because you comment, you like, you send hearts, you send waves. And um, so we, we, we know you're there. So we appreciate you for your consistency. Thank you. Thank God for all of you who joined us today. Here and, and doing as well. Tina, pray for us up here in We forgot to do great and mighty things. It's time to pray soon. We come home on Sunday. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank
Amen. Church, say amen. amen. Church, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Church, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give the praise of God today for all He's given to us. Thank God for how He keeps on making a way. Thank God for each one who's in the building today. Thank God for First Lady. Thank God for the praise team. Let's give them a round of applause this morning. Thank God for you and you and you. Amen. <laughs> God's been good to us. We keep giving him thanks and praise. Uh, the psalmist said, I believe the scripture said, he dwells in the praises of his people. So we honor God today for all of his goodness to us. We bless his holy name. The psalm also said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So we give God thanks and praise for allowing us to be here today. To praise his name, to thank him and to bless him for all the good things he has done. We acknowledge again today, I want to thank God for Brother Calvin Williams and Angel Williams. They celebrated 25 years of ministry. So let's give them a round of applause again. Amen. Thank God for them. We celebrated this past uh, weekend, and we just thank God for them. <coughs> we just know that God has been good to us as a congregation, as a people, and we don't want to take it for granted. Amen. 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 So he says, "In everything, give thanks." This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We say. So we bless the Lord today, and we thank Him for all of His goodness. Turn me again in your Bible, Psalm number forty. Psalm number 40, three verses 5 through 10, we find it say amen. amen. Psalm number 40, verse number 5, we read, it says, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I were to play, I speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, my ears you have opened. Burn offering and sin offering we do not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book that is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news. Somebody say good news. Good news, good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O oh Lord, you yourself know. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. Our New Testament text today comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, we're going to read verses 1 through 20. Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. When you find it, say amen again. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 20. Reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, and it reads, then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. My God. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Come out. Did he, he ask him, What is your name? And he had to say, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran down violently down ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled. And they told it, somebody said they told it, they told it, in the city 
and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed. They had the legion. Sister Wanda, they were sitting and clothed in his right mind. Amen, somebody. And they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon possessed about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you, and how he has compassion, how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in the capitalists all that Jesus had done for him. And all marvel. All right. This morning I want to have read for you Psalm number 40, verses 5 through 10. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, 1 through 20. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of His eternal word. Our supper this morning, our theme, the good news experience. Our supper today is it's important to tell your friends. It's important to tell friends. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for one more time to stand before your people. Now, Father, we ask for your blessing and your favor and your anointing, O oh God, as we stand and declare your word. Your Holy Spirit will be present. That you rule and super rule, O oh God. Now, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, may it be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. That's all these blessings in Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And you see, our subject this morning is the good news experience. It's important to tell the friends. As we've been sharing from this theme, the good news experience, we know that our society is filled with bad news. Almost to the point to where every time we turn the news on, something bad is happening. And the more we look around, it seems like uh, the society is filled with bad news. But I stand before you today. As a servant of the Most High God, to remind you that there is good news in the world. Amen. Amen. The good news is that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and mine. Our sins will be forgiven if we only come to Him and, and believe in Him in faith. Amen. To accept Him as our Lord and Savior, He will save us from our sins. That, that's good news. Amen. Amen. That's the good news that you and I need to proclaim to the world. To tell the world that there is a Savior who came into the world to save us. From our sins. As I've been reading from this text, it says, Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works that you have done. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you at all. If I declare and speak of them, they are more than can be known. Now, I, I pause right there to remind you, even though the news says one thing and shows one thing, I want today to remember that God is still doing great things. Amen. He's still making a way out of nowhere. And every morning the sun comes up, that's a brand new miracle, amen? Because you and I, we couldn't pull the sun around the globe, amen? But God has so wonderfully done it, amen? That for thousands, if not millions of years, the sun keeps coming up day after day, amen? That's a reminder that all saw that the, the, the sun, uh, was it Annie? The sun will come out <laughs> tomorrow. I want you today to believe that no matter what bad news you get, you can still wait on God and know that the sun will come out tomorrow. If God has a plan for your life for you to see another day, you can trust and believe that God will do what he said. He will allow the sun <laughs> to come out again tomorrow. That gives you hope, baby. But one of the scripture says is Lamentations, that his mercies are new, what? Every morning, great is his faithfulness. So God is a faithful God. And you and I got to declare his goodness to the world. We are those, those, those heralds of good news who should be telling the world that God is still good. There are so many things he has done that the Bible says to here in the text that if we could recount them, we couldn't put them in order. Have you ever tried to put something in order? It was out of order? Like a puzzle box that was thrown at you? On a table and there's puzzle pieces everywhere. It takes you a long time to put everything in order. But I want you to see that that's how great God is. That he has done so many wonderful things. That we wouldn't have the time to put them all in order. Of how great and wonderful he is. 
So it's up to you and I to be those people who will tell the good news. Verse 9 says, I have proclaimed the good news of Christ. This is very simple. And do that, indeed, I do not restrain my lips. I want you and I to be those people who will tell of the goodness of Jesus. There's a world, a lost world, who needs to hear about the good things that God has done. And when you tell it, they can see that God is real. Amen? Our supper this morning is it's important to tell your friends. Our New Testament text comes from the Gospel of Mark. Mark's Gospel written that we may see the life of Jesus Christ. Had a dual focus of service and sacrifice. That Jesus came into the world to, to serve us and, to, and most of all to be a sacrifice for our sins. Aren't you glad you don't have to die for your own sins? But the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And today, we want to lift up Jesus to remind you that you don't have to give up your life. But you just have to serve him, amen? Serve him and your sacrifice is to tell others about his goodness. To live a life that reflects his glory in the world. In other words, to let your light shine, amen? I know you heard the song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. God wants us to let our light shine before me. It means see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Our text this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark chapter 5. And you hear a very familiar passage of scripture. It is a story where a demon-possessed man was healed. There are three things in this text that I want to reflect on today. As we think about our subject, it's important to tell your friends. It's important to tell your friends. And, and this text reminds us that everybody ought to have a friend. Amen. Amen. Everybody needs a friend in every season of life. We, we need somebody to be there to help us through life. Someone who knows what's going on in our lives and who can go through it, may not be able to stop the, the troubles of life, but they can go through it with us. Amen. And that's what we want to experience in this Christian journey, in this good news experience that if God is blessing me, we want him to bless our friends too. Amen. Amen. So it's important to tell your friends. And in this text, I believe Jesus wants us to see the importance of us sharing the good news with somebody we know and love. There are three things in this text today I want to reflect on as we consider our subject. It's important to tell your friends. The first thing I want to say today is talk about our suffering. Our suffering. The text says, then they came to the other side. And if you remember last time, we talked about the time when Jesus and his disciples crossed over the sea. And the storm, and the storm was such that Jesus said, peace be still, and the winds and the waves ceased, and there was a great calm. After they got to the other side, the text says, then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when they had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had been, he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles were broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran to worship him and cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And from reading this, uh, I see that this man was going through a long time of suffering. Do you see it in the text? Do you see the suffering that he endured? Because he was, he was possessed by an unclean spirit. Help me, Holy Ghost. And the text goes on to describe how much suffering he was going through. He had been bound in chains. And sometimes he had the strength to pull the chains apart. But the suffering seemed to continue. He had shackles on him, amen? But every now and again he could break the shackles, but the suffering continued. Help me, Holy Ghost. And it says, neither could anyone tame him. His friends, his family, those around in the community, they could not tame the trouble he was going through, the suffering he was enduring. 
And it says that our ways night and day. Doesn't suffering seem worse at night? Help me, Holy Ghost. It said night and day. He was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But the Bible says uh, he saw Jesus. Amen, somebody. I want you to know today that no matter how long your suffering is, there's a man named Jesus who can bring you the deliverance that you need. He saw Jesus from afar and ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of, most, of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. He was already being tormented. But yet Jesus was there. And in my sanctified mind, I know that he may not have seen any newspaper readers. He didn't see them on TV. But yet he knew it was Jesus. The Bible says that, that, that it's good for you to believe, but the devils also believe and tremble at Jesus Christ. I want you to know that today, Jesus can change your life. Even the demons know it. And you and I need to tell the world that Jesus can change your life. I want you to see that our suffering sometimes is, the, is there for us to be able to tell somebody that Jesus has the power to deliver you from whatever it is you're suffering through. It's necessary. It's like the cross. It's necessary. He can do something about your suffering. But you got to be willing to come to him. <laughs> Some people run away from God in their midst of their suffering. They hide out, they go the opposite way, and they miss out on the blessing that Jesus has for them. But I want to ask you today, in the midst of your suffering, don't run away from Jesus. Are you running in the wrong direction? Yeah, yeah. Running away from the one who has the healing for your life? Mm -hmm. Don't run away from Jesus. The old psalmist says, sinner, run to Jesus. <laughs> He'll save your soul. Yeah. The text says, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. I want to ask, why are the houses of worship empty today? We're worshiping Jesus is just what we need to deliver us from our suffering, our sorrows, the shame, the things we go through in life. If we would only run and worship Jesus, our lives can change. We're talking about the good news experience today. The good news is that Jesus knows about our suffering. He can deliver us from whatever, no matter how long it may have been. He knows how to deliver us from our suffering. So the text says, for he said to him, come out of me, <laughs> unclean spirit. Mm -hmm. Did he ask him, what is your name? Mm -hmm. And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out mm -hmm. of the country. So we can see how much power Jesus has over your suffering and mine. But we got to take, take the suffering to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. See, the demons knew that they couldn't stay with Jesus in the building, amen? amen. In the presence, in the midst. So I want to ask you today, why would you wait so long to take your burdens to the Lord, amen? amen. Take your suffering to Jesus Christ. He knows how to deliver you for everything you've been suffering through. And I want us today to take our suffering, our, our sorrows to Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says, For I consider that the suffering at this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory to be, to be which shall be revealed in us. I want you to know today that, that one day all of these that we've been going through, all of our trials, all of our burdens, all of the weights that we carry, one day all of it will seem like nothing. Amen. Because Jesus has a purpose and a plan for our life. Yes, if we will take our burdens to him, one day we will not only uh, go through these sufferings, but we will share in his glory. Over there. Our supper. I want us to remember the tale. Our supper. The second thing in this text today is our support. <laughs> our support. Look at the text. Mark chapter 5, verse 11 says Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran badly down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled 
They told him. Somebody said they told him. In the city and in the country. And they went out to, the, to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. In this portion of the text this morning, I see that sometimes in life, the very support that had held us and, 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 and held us up, sometimes they abandoned us. In this text, these demons, they had been in this man for all this time, and those demons filled 2,000 pigs. And I heard, I remember one preacher saying, can you imagine how much suffering he endured that, that, that this one man endured the suffering that of demons that fill 2,000 pigs. You just think about that for a moment. That's how much suffering he had endured. Amen. And they carried him through day and night suffering, day and night uh, in the mountains and in the hills and in the cemeteries. But, but when Jesus came, all that went away. Amen. And the people who, who took care of the demon, who took care of the, those, those pigs, they were afraid. They saw a man delivered. Help me, Holy Ghost. And instead of saying, praise God, hallelujah, thank God for delivering them and saving them, they were afraid. No wonder we need God to keep us clothed and in our right mind. Amen, somebody. See, that's what the Lord says to say that every day. I used to hear my mama praying, you know, Lord, thank you for keeping me in my right mind. Because sometimes the people you think who are going to support you, who are going to give you encouragement, help me, Holy Ghost. We're going to tell you the right things. We're going to come alongside you in life. They are the very ones who leave you alone. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm talking about our support today because sometimes we depend on our friends, our neighbors, our community to uphold us, but they're the very ones who are going to abandon us. I even heard people say, sometimes your family members will turn their back on you. Help me, Holy Ghost. And we see in this text after Jesus has had delivered him. And I know they were wanting this man to be clothed in his right mind. Here he was seated <laughs> and clothed and in his right mind like both of us this morning. And they still were afraid. They still wanted Jesus, the text says, they wanted him to depart from their region. They wanted Jesus to go away. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm talking about our support. Jesus is the level of support that we all need in our lives. Yes, amen. Yes, See, when Jesus is present, the demons have to leave. Amen. Right. They have to go away. Yes. They have to go. So if they even ask Jesus, please don't send us out of the country. So I want you to see that Jesus has the power to deliver you from the power of the enemy. Amen. He can send them so far away. <laughs> amen, somebody. That you will never experience them again. Amen, somebody. And that's what I want in my life. I want the Lord to deliver us from evil. Yeah. You know what we pray? Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yeah, yeah. Are you a praying church today? Yes, yes. I want you to pray and ask God to lead you not into temptation, but to deliver you from evil. That your demons will have to leave and never show up again. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Jesus simply said, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Come on, come on. Every once in a while, we ought to tell that to our family members and friends. Come on, we ought to look at our mirror and say, Get out, unclean spirit. Get out of this house. Get out of my mind. Get out of my room. Get off my job. Leave me alone. Say it. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I resist you. Stay fast in the faith. I will never serve you. I'm all for Jesus and none for the devil. Amen, somebody. Come out of the man of the spirit. I want you to believe that today that the God that you and I serve has given us the power to be able to say, get out, devil. No more. No more to suffer. No more to torment. No more to trouble. No more to trial. Somebody ought to say hallelujah today. You better say that. Tell the unclean spirit to get out. You are not welcome here anymore. Amen, somebody. You can tell the devil to shut up and sit out. Amen, somebody. Don't bother me no more. Because I belong to Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. He has now become my support. Amen. When your friends walk away, Jesus will be there. He will be there to help you and to uphold you and to guide you through life. Jesus will be our support. Amen. He'll lead and guide your support. Yes, sir. And tell your friends. The third thing, and the last thing I want to say in this text this morning is our story. See, our support, our suffering, our support, and our story. Those are the things that we need to, to, to tell our friends as we go through this life. Because Jesus is with us to help us through. John 15, I'm going to read that text. John 15, verse 18 says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So don't look for the world to support you, but look for Jesus to support you. Amen? Amen. The third thing and the last thing is our story. Look at verse 18 where it says, And when he got into the boat, <laughs> he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go on to your friend. Somebody say, Your friend. Your friend. And tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. And how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in the capitals all that Jesus had done for him. And all along. See, I want you to know today, it's important to tell your story. And I was reading this text and studying and preparing for this message. Uh, I saw in the text something that, that was so important today. Sometimes in our life, we want Jesus to be with us all the time. Our friends, our family, we want to have all the money we ever need. We don't want to have any more troubles, no problems. We want to just have everything just the way we want. But I'm going to tell you that God has some work for us to do. Amen, somebody. We can't sit around on flowery beds of leaves. When Jesus, uh, the Bible said, Jesus, must Jesus bear? The song I said, must he bear the cross alone? And all the world go free? He said, no, the song I said, no, there is a cross for everyone, and there is a cross for me. So Jesus told this man uh, who had been possessed with demons, who wanted to get on the boat with him. He said, no, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And the Bible didn't say, and he said, well, man, come on, man, give me another chance. Let me, I just want to, I want to hang out with you. I just want to spend time with you to save my life here, to turn it around. No, the text doesn't say all that. I'm not saying he didn't say that. But the text just says, he departed. And he began to proclaim in the countless all that Jesus had done for him. So I want to say to Shady Dale, we need to go and tell our friends. When we leave this place today. To tell our friends what great things God has done for us. Amen. Because God has done great things for us. Amen. He has done things that nobody else could have done. He can make a way out of nowhere. He can turn water into wine. He can open the eyes of the blind. He can heal the sick. He can raise the dead. And today, it's up to you and I to tell the world what Jesus has done. That word, the capitalist, denotes ten cities. Amen. In other words, he didn't have friends in one place. <laughs> he had friends all over, amen? And the Bible says that he went to those ten places, and the people that he told, they all marveled. See, it's one thing to hear it from Jesus, but it's better to hear it from somebody you know, amen? amen. See, everybody don't know Jesus. Amen, somebody? Amen. Everybody don't know that he can save, and he can heal, and he can deliver, he can do great things. But if they see you standing there, telling them what God has done for you, they will know and marvel at how great God is. It was more important to Jesus that this demon-possessed man leave and tell what Jesus had done for him. He could have said, yeah, come on with me. But no, it was more important for him to go and tell the people in those ten cities what God had done for him. And I want to say to Shane, though, it's more important that you don't wait for Pastor Miller to go everywhere, but you be willing, amen, to tell somebody what God has done for you. Because others need him too. All around us in, in, in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world, somebody needs to hear the great things that God has done. Amen. So I want you and I to be those vessels 
who will go and tell somebody what God has done for us. Matthew 28 is called the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. It's not called the Great Suggestion, or the Great Idea, or the Great Promotion, but it's called the Great Commission. And you and I have been committed by Jesus Christ to do these things. And the Bible says, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, yes. baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen. So it's been said, amen. amen. So we want to tell our story, amen. Tell what Jesus Christ has done for us. Tell the world the great things that he has done so that, 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 that they too might be saved and experience the, the good news experience. The good things that Jesus Christ has done for you because others need him too. Let us stand together. I pray you understood the message today. It's important to tell your friends, to tell somebody what Jesus Christ has done. To let the world know that God is a good God. He's still in the business of making a difference in your life. We can tell our suffering, the things that we've been going through. Because one day we're going to be able to testify what God has done for us. Some people believe that when you get saved that all your troubles are over with. Sometimes you get more trouble. Sometimes you go through trials that, that don't seem to make sense. We can tell our suffering as a testimony of what God can do. Our support. Sometimes the people that we lean on the most will let us down and walk away. But Jesus is there to support us and to, to deliver us from all the troubles that we've been in. He will be our support. We can tell our story. Jesus he don't just want us to be saved and sitting around. He wants to go and tell the world the great thing that he has done for us. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can know him. This is easy to ABC to admit that you need him to forgive you of your sins. Do you believe that he's the Son of God and he died on the cross and rose again that your sins might be forgiven? And to see confess him as your Lord and personal Savior. If you're not saved today, why don't you pray the simple prayer with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. Lord, I, I admit that I have sinned against you. I need your forgiveness. Lord, I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again that my sins will be forgiven. Lord, I ask you now to forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save me. Lord, thank you for saving me. And I believe now that you and I confess that you are the Christ, the Son of God, and you are my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me, O Lord. Come into my heart. Feel me with the Spirit. Help me to live my life for you. I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray the prayer, you're now a child of God. God has a great plan for your life. I'm going to say, well, Pastor, I'm already saved, but what must I do? I want you to tell your friends. Tell your friends the good things that God has done for you. You can tell them you're suffering. Tell them what you have been through. Because you can't tell what a person has been through just by looking at them. Tell them you're suffering. Tell them your support. That Jesus is the one who, you, who will support you through the ups and downs of life. Because sometimes people and friends may let you down, even family may let you down. But Jesus will be with you to the end. Most of all, tell your story. Tell what God has done for you. You don't have to be some great expert, some theologian, with degrees and letters behind your name. Just tell what God has done for you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for this word, reminding us that it's important for us to tell our friends. Tell our friends what we've been through. Our troubles, our trials, our burdens. I pray today that we would not forget the great things you brought us through. Tell the world that you are our support. You, you, you are the one who supports us through every up and down, every season in life. Most of all, tell, help us to tell our story, the great things you have done for us. Bless your people today. Help us to apply this word to our lives. 
But one day when we're standing before you, we hear you say, we are done. Thou good and faithful servant. Because we want to be faithful over these few things. Now I want to hear you say, you're a ruler over many things. Enter to the joy of thy Lord. Let's show people today. And we give you all the glory and the praise. Because in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We bless the Lord today for his goodness and how he blessed us through the word today. And at this time, if there are any expressions, any response to the message, please make it known in this time. Thank God that you are blessed 
want to thank the, the, the online viewers for joining us. And don't forget to tell your friends. Don't forget to tell your friends and tell your family members. I'm going to be insane. <laughs>